What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and tonight I have a very special guest for you, founder of Garage Gym Life Media, John Greaves the Third. Ciao, homie. Welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring strong men into the mainstream by discussing all of the latest strong man events in the greatest analytic detail that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to comment below whether you agree or disagree with my videos. I love the engagement and I respond to every single comment. Now on to today's topic. Hey John, how are you this evening? Thanks for joining us. Man, thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, it is a pleasure to be allowed access to your platform to be able to kind of share some of my story and what we do with your viewers. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have you on. And actually, you know, for the people that don't know you or haven't heard about your mission, I think it's a very important one. Can you kind of talk through your mission with Garage Gym Life Media, how you came to start it and kind of what it means to you? Sure. Um, so essentially, we are for athletes who train at home. That's on one of our, we had it on one of our, um, what do you call those things, like bumpers or stingers that would come in sometimes when we would introduce uh, some of our older YouTube videos. Um, and what that means is we treat you like an athlete, but we also treat you like you're the owner of your gym. So unlike an athlete who trains in a public training facility or anywhere else, you not only have to worry about your training, but you also have to worry about environmental stuff like where the equipment comes from, um, the AC, the, you know, keeping the bugs out, making sure that it's sanitary. And so we try to address all of those issues by providing you and connecting you with resources that will help you make sound decisions um, in your capacity as gym owner, in some cases coach for yourself, and as also an athlete with goals. Whether you compete or not, we treat you like you're an athlete who should be able to respond to whatever demands life places on you um, from playing with your kids to maybe going to playing in that church softball uh, game and not being torn up on Monday when you got to go back to work. Um, that's really the, the nutshell of it. It's like, I'm trying to help athletes who train at home, have all of the resources they need to succeed. So they don't feel like they have to sacrifice family time and go get a gym membership in order to continue to pursue the, whatever goals they may have. Yeah, it's a really um, great goal and a great mission, something I really respect and something I think I've really connected with you over. So uh, thanks for elaborating on that. And um, so I know that you kind of have done great things in a variety of areas, uh, the different media outlets, interviewing athletes, you've done live streaming for events. So, you know, I want to give you a minute, just take a moment to brag about some of your recent accomplishments. <laughs> okay. Um it really, it's a testimony to the power of this community and what I saw as a gaping hole, all right? Because most of the garage gym, home gym, whatever you want to call it, outlets focus on reviewing equipment, which is important because you got to know whether your stuff is trash, you know, the stuff you're going to buy is trash or not. But then everything else uh, for a long time, uh, from coaching to uh, training programs to even entertainment, you know, was geared towards people who might be in a public gym. And so one thing that I just, for example, realized, because I've been training, I've never had a gym membership. Uh, I My first job out of college, I worked in a public gym and I started working out in college. So I, I trained in the student center. And so my student fees covered it. So I've never had a public gym membership. I, I visited public gyms on a day pass, whatever, but I've never had a membership. And so for 20 years, I've been pursuing various athletic goals in a home gym environment. And one thing I realized is like, there have been times when the motivation just isn't there. And so I put on world's strongest man videos, whether they were reruns or not, I'd put them on in the background. I have watched pumping iron a lot of times. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My son's trained with me and we can all quote parts of the movie randomly um, because we have it on the background. And so that's what led to live streaming and so like you were watching our last live stream with the Mammoth Strength 5 uh, Pro-Am, which, which was a Platinum Plus event for Strongman Corporation. And it was actually cool because we also had at the same time Masters Nationals going on like within the same live stream, plus a Highland Games event was in the background, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's actually been our most popular stream to date. I mean, we had nine, as of right now, we've got over 9,400 views on it 
which is great for a channel that's only got uh, we've got 2000, like 2180, I think, subscribers. So to get 9000 views plus on something is a very big deal for us. Uh, before that, we were averaging in the 2000s on our live streams um, and uh, we've live streamed several powerlifting meets. We had the pleasure of being invited to the Arnold uh, to live stream a grip sport competition. We went to the Arnold. We covered not we not only live streamed that event for li arm lifting USA, but then we also covered a number of things, you know, um, like product releases and whatnot, just because we were there on a media pass. And that was actually a bucket list thing to have a young media company that has to begin by explaining to people what we do. And then we get invited to the Arnold on a media pass and we start getting access to stuff that I had never, even though I've been to the Arnold a lot of times, I was always there as a, um, I guess, a consumer. So there's a huge difference between going on a media pass. You Number one, I was getting in there, the Arnold opens at nine, um, I think nine, and I was getting in there at seven. So wow. we're walking around watching people setting up. You had time to talk to different people at booths. Um, I actually did two interviews with people at booths. This is the 2018 um, Arnold. And that was really, I mean, honestly, it was a bucket list thing because at, I remember in 2017 we were there and somebody asked us because they knew we were trying to get our thing ramped up. And they're like, hey, did you get in here on a media pass? Just random, just curiosity question, right? And I said, no. And it immediately became a goal. So for it to happen like the next year was unexpected. And I was just so happy and excited. Like, man, I'm actually, I'm, I mean, I was walking around with my media badge on like, hey, like <laughs> my chest stuck out. Like I just defeated the forces of evil. Nice. Um, you know, uh, so that was huge for me. Um, and then honestly, one thing that has happened that I have, I think is unexpected and I don't necessarily like it is I'm starting to see it. I see it as a negative is I'm starting to see people who see me on social, who like know me from social media and they'll see me and be nervous about meeting me. And I'm like, why are you nervous about meeting me? Um, we were at a, a powerlifting meet. We were live streaming it. And one of the judges came up and they were like, you know, like nervous to talk to me. And I was like, they're hanging out. And I was like, um, I thought they needed to tell me something. So I stopped you know, I was just talking to my guys, getting us ready. And I stopped and I was like, hey, what's, you know, what's up? And they said, are you Garage Gym Life? And uh, I was like, uh, yeah. I mean, we had like the tablecloth with our logo and everything. I said, I said yeah. yeah. And they're like, I said, yeah, hey, I, you know, my, I'm John, what's your name? And she told me and she said, I, I have one of your banners in my gym and and I am I follow you on, I've been following you for years. And I was like, oh, wow. Hey, thank you. You know, and she's just like nervous. Right. And I was like, what's wrong? And she's just like, and I, she just never expected, I guess, when you only see someone on social media, they kind of become like a fictional character almost. Yeah. So I'm standing there and they're like, oh, wow. And then even at the Mammoth, I ran into people, you know, that I only knew from social media. And they were like, man, it's so cool to meet you. And, and I still, I mean, dude, I'm just a regular dude. And I can't imagine what it's like for people who have like 30, 40, 50,000 followers on Instagram. You know, we just have 10 and people are acting weird. So <laughs> don't be, if you see me in public, don't be weird. You nah, know, man, like I'll, just a dude. I, I, I've never met you in person, but I'll vouch for the fact of all my interactions with you. I think you're super friendly and approachable. Yeah, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just a dude. Uh, I still sneeze, cough and everything else, but I'm negative. I have a test to prove it. I was going to say maybe a little more sneezing than you wanted at Mammoth. Oh, uh, man, I had bronchitis <laughs> throughout the entire thing. I had bronchitis the week leading up to it. Um, so I used to fight. Um, I fought you know, I was a kick passer. Well, I trained mar mixed martial arts, but I competed in kickboxing. And so my nose has been broken like seven times. The first oh, wow. time I broke it was actually playing pickup football when I was uh, 14, 15 years old, I think. I was playing pickup football uh, in my in the, my grandmother's neighborhood. And we played with some guys from Europe who were not familiar with the American version of football. And so this dude on my team goes to tackle somebody and he his forehead hit my nose and broke Ooh. my nose. And uh, that was my first time getting a broken nose. And then after that, I broke it again. I rebroke it a couple of times training for fights. Uh, I rebroke it training for regionals uh, in kickboxing. So anyway, the point is that because it's been broken so many times, it's easy for me to get bronchitis because if I get a cold, um, I don't. It's harder for me to clear the what you call it. And so it'll get down into my chest. So I had a, a bron I had bronchitis. And then I'm like, man, I got I had to wear a mask, obviously, because the CDC guidelines. So anytime I wasn't on the mic, I had to put on a mask. Well, 
anytime somebody needed an announcement made, I'd, they come or they come ask me a question or whatever. So let's say like we there was a, a injury to Tim Sowards. He wasn't hurt, but we thought he was injured, right? And his mom was watching the live stream. And one of the things we try to do is be interactive with the people in the live stream chat. So his mom's watching the live stream. Tim falls down. He's doing a yoke carry, falls over. And we're like, is this dude okay? And I know Tim. Uh, I actually met him at the Arnold uh, the year that we went there or whatever. And so I said, oh, well, I said, I'll go check it. You know, uh, uh, Sue, I think his mom's name is. I said, I'll be happy to go yeah. check him out, right? To make sure he's all right. So put the mask on, go down the stairs, bronchitis and all. It's There's a dusty floor. Walk all the way over to Tim, talk to him. So I'm walking across the dusty floor. And I come back, I got to go up the stairs. And I'm like, <gasps> like that, you know, and then sit down and try to talk. And it was really, really hard. So when I got back from the Mammoth, um, I was in full recovery mode. I don't remember Sunday at all. I slept throughout all of it. So the Mammoth was over Saturday. We got home at 2 a.m. and I slept until Monday. Um, and then I had a, a virtual doctor's appointment that got me some medication and I took the medicine. And uh, Tuesday I had to go take a test just to make sure, cause I mean, I've just been around all these people and I'm here, whatever. My son gets the same cold every year and then he passes it on to the rest of us every year around the same time. So I was like, I'll bet you that's what this is. But just to make sure I went and got, I took a test, came back negative. But then after that, other than that event, I didn't leave the house. So uh, I was kind of bedridden for like five days, except for a daily walk, just to kind of clear my, I mean, I, I just walk every day. That's just one of my habits. I walk every day, it helps me think, and it's just, just good for you. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that, that was rough though. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's really a testament to your character, though. No other producer would do that for somebody on a live stream. And I feel like I saw you give her like three or four reassurances after that, which I thought, like, this is really a nice guy. I mean, I think one of the things about our live streams and why I'm so proud of it is because a lot of times when people live stream stuff, with the exception of probably the International Powerlifting Federation, when they live stream, they have play-by-play uh, -play and color commentary, right? They'll say, hey, this just happened. This is why that person's lift didn't count. And they'll just, they'll be interactive with you. But they're mm -hmm. kind of very, um, I don't know, uh, they're very, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's, uh, it's like watching tennis. You know, like when you hear the play-by-play -play in tennis, it's kind of like, or golf, it's kind of like formal and we're here, for, here to work. Whereas if you listen to the play-by-play -play for like the UFC, it's a little bit more fun and whatever. And that's right. the difference between us. And then you have most live streams where they just turn their camera on and walk off, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes they don't even hire somebody to do the live streaming like we do. Instead, they'll just have the event promoter will live stream it. And so he just, he doesn't have time to be on camera. He's got stuff to do. So he just turned right. the camera on and walk away. And you just better hope that the announcer is loud enough and clear enough so that you can hear what he's saying through whatever cell phone they're set up to do the live stream. And we try to be interactive to give you the feeling as much of the experience of being at the meet as possible, minus the fact, minus having to sit in this hot, smelly room because it's you know it's if especially if it's powerlifting we have a powerlifting me coming up uh, especially if it's powerlifting there's some various odors from all these people wearing singlets and sweating in an enclosed environment so you get to skip that but you get all of the 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 interaction the camaraderie you know we tell you what's going on we go backstage and talk to people we pull people in have them sit down in with us um and we did some of that at the mammoth as well have people come we had um david dennis Who's really who's cool people? He's the founder of Gorilla Strength Equipment. I interviewed yep. him a few years ago, and uh, he's actually the one who provided the equipment for some of the equipment for the Mammoth and mm -hmm. for Masters Nationals. So he was able to sit down and give us insight into his design for the wheelbarrows, and you know why the competitors were doing this or that, and how it was affecting their performance. So we try to do things like that because we understand your family and friends may not know about the sport you compete in. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have any. All they know is he's going to go do a thing. And I competed in powerlifting as well. And oh I remember coming, you know, I'm all excited. Hey, I got to, you know, I made the top 20. This is years ago, but I made the top 20 on powerlifting watch for the deadlift in my age group. Yay. And I tell my dad and he's like, I'm proud of you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I don't know. He doesn't know what that means. Yeah. Um I still, I also remember we had a fight, my first fight in the ring. Um, this is, man, this is years ago. I was, uh, 
I was in my uh, early 20s and uh, I get in the ring and <laughs> um, I'm not then. So I was fighting. Uh, they expect the guy who was the judge happened to also be the coach of the guy who I was fighting, which okay. that's not a good idea. But anyway, nope. so the guy who's the referee. But I mean, you know, you expect him. You're still a professional being impartial. Right. And what happened is the fight starts in like a minute. I not the dude. I dropped him in a minute 40. OK. Right. So I drop him and the guy, everybody is in shock. Because they all expected this other guy to win, right? Because nobody knows me. And I, I hit him with a straight right, dropped him. And so he's looking, and he this is a referee now. He looks down, looks up, looks at the guy's brother who was in his corner, like, like he saw it. <laughs> my coach is like, Are you planning on starting to count? You saw the yeah. counting to 10 now. I said, Okay, so my coach starts counting for him. He said, Look, we're already at five, six, right. seven. Right. <laughs> and he keeps counting. You know, you're supposed to stop at 10. My coach is like 15, 16. How long do <laughs> you think? Meanwhile, the dude I dropped is like on like hands and knees. Like, you know, for those people who ha- are familiar with high school rest and coll- collegiate wrestling, he's like in kind of referees position on all fours. Right. Yep, and he's yep. just looking around, like trying to figure out what's going on. And that, I mean, he should have honestly, if I were him, I'd have got up because look, he hadn't started the count. I got time to get up, collect myself. He probably could have got back up. I mean, I, I'd have beat him anyway. OK, I'm just whatever. But you still would have got back up and you wouldn't have looked weird cuz I'm not about to be on my hands and knees in from some in front of some other dude just like whatever like looking <laughs> like I don't know what just happened. <laughs> and so an argument starts. The dude's brother gets up there, yells at my coach like, "Hey, been no 20 seconds. My coach like, "You're an idiot and a liar." And he said, "You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you." So now everybody gets in the ring. Oh and no. <laughs> So everybody so I'm already in the ring. I'm like, "Oh, so I'm going to have to fight you too." Okay, so we're all walking over there and then Everything gets set, sorted out. Meanwhile, my man is still on hands and knees. He is not interested in fighting at all, right? He, <laughs> it's hilarious. I got the video on VHS. That's how long ago it was. Nice. But he's not interested in getting up at all. And they finally count him out. And I get out of the ring. And my mom was there. And she was like, uh, <laughs> she said, my dad couldn't come. He's like, I just can't do it. He's like, he's, he's a nervous person. He's like, I don't want to watch you get hit. I said, well, what if I'm the one doing the hit? And he said, man, I just, whatever. He didn't, he never watched any of my football games. He just, I, I can't do it. Really? And uh, when I was in high school, yeah, he, he can't do it. Look, man, he took me, dropped me off at one of my games and saw these guys, saw my teammates walking in. These are guys on the offensive line. I was free safety. I was a little guy. Uh, when I got to high school, I was 5'7", 130, 130 pounds. Wow. 125, 130. So I really, I didn't even really tackle people. I dove in their way and they trip over my body. <laughs> so he Whatever sees, takes, yeah. So he sees these guys who are on the offensive line. So they're huge. He said he refused to let me out the car. He said you about to play them? Oh no! I said they're my teammates. He said okay, well hide behind them. I said I'm a free safety. What am I supposed? To? I'm already behind them. He said keep it that way. So anyway, so he didn't go to the fight. My mom was there, and also I remember her saying is. Is it like this every time? <laughs> After all that commotion and chaos, it's like, is it always like this? And so that's also in my mind when I do a live stream. It's like you have people who have no idea about what to expect. They just know you said, hey, I'm competing in Strongman or I have a Highland Games event or I have a powerlifting meet or a grip competition. I, I'm doing whatever and I want you to watch it. And they're like, all right, sure. They're humoring you, right? But they don't know what's going on. So we try to provide it feedback to them tell them what the rule we start try to start out every event with a rules meeting a rules briefing hey these are the rules that these guys are going to be competing under and then throughout the event we'll answer questions why was that not a good lift has so and so already competed yet as much as we can so yeah that was a very long answer no that was a Sorry. very cool answer and by the way let me go scratch off uh, martial arts from my list because your answer was way better than my question <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, man. Cool. So let's rewind a little bit. Tell my audience something interesting about your upbringing, your roots that you think people would be interested to hear. All right. Uh, so uh, I can either tell you the story about pizza or um, I was born in another country. So I was born in Liberia, West Africa. Okay. okay. And um, the year that I came to the United States was the same year the military took over the government. So I, um, I spent six months out of school. So when I came to the States, um, I was in the fourth grade. I was seven. I turned seven on the plane and I came to fourth grade. I was fourth in fourth grade. Well, then they put me back into the third grade and I remember that that was actually my first experience with sort of like self-directed learning 
because the school that I was in, they put me back in the third grade because I, I was obviously six months behind all the fourth graders. But it was one of those things where it's like the um, the curriculum was you sit down in a cube. You're at school, but you're still in a cubicle. And if the, you read the book and you just answer the questions, right? It's not like the teacher's teaching you. It's not a self-directed learning. And so that has actually really impacted me in terms of how I approach training because I have a very eclectic approach to training. It's like whatever works, I'm really, really big in the old time physical culture. So like I told you, like I, so like I deadlifted 551. And wow. when, I, when I deadlifted 551, that put me in the top 20 in powerlifting watch a few years ago, right? Well, um, then I started saying, well, I want a 600 pound deadlift. But at the same time, I'm also interested in the old time physical culture thing. So I have done a neck bridge. So that's where you're on your, you go back and your head, so like a wrestler's bridge, right? So my right. Thing, yep. only thing touching the floor are the top of my head and my bottom of my feet. Mm -hmm. And I pull over and I can do a, a bench press, right? So I've done oh, that wow. with two, I've done that three reps with 245 pounds that way. Um, I have a uh, 135 pound bent press, barbell bent press. So mm -hmm. that's where you're holding the bar like that. You turn around and you bend over. Um, barbell wow. bent press. Um, I have squatted. I mean, I have been influenced to do dumb things in the So I've squatted 315 for 20 reps multiple times. Um, the hardest part about that, honestly, is you start out with a belt on and you can't breathe. You got to take the belt off because it's just you can't, you know. So now you got to like. So I took it off and I'm standing there. Fortunately, I mean, I can I can do a um, no hands squat, barbell squat. With OK, three, with, I can do a single with 315. Uh, so. I took the, uh, I had to let go of the bar and bring my hands down, take the belt off. Like, I'm not going to be able to breathe if this sucker stays on. Throw it down, put my hands back up, and then continue the set. Um, and that's because this guy challenged me to do this thing, you know, to do that. 30, 20 reps with that. And then it was like, kind of like, I think I had to do like 225, 20 times, and then follow it up with 405, 20 times, like as quickly as possible. And I don't accept challenges anymore, but. <laughs> that was one of my more notable dumb ideas. I was like, this is a dumb idea, but now, I, now I'm curious to see if I can do it. So that's probably how I ended up getting into trouble. Most of the things I've tried have been like, I wonder if I can do that. That's funny. Um, I mean, breathing has a much bigger impact than a lot of people give it credit oh, yeah. for. I actually, I interviewed Erin Stoney mm -hmm. last night, and I was asking her for yoke tips because she said yoke was her favorite. And she said the number one tip is take in a big breath when you start and don't let it like get through it fast and don't let it out because it'll ruin your stability. And I, I just never yeah, thought right. of that until someone who's done it so many times tells you. Yeah, because I mean, now I don't do a lot of yoke stuff because I just don't have one. Mm -hmm. But um, every time I've done it, it's kind of like doing a, a squat, uh, a moving squat in the sense that you got to if you don't have air to create. I wish I, uh, I wish I had one here, but um it's funny because I don't drink soda. The only soda oh, can right. I have in that, but a soda can is the best illustration for this. So the only soda can I have is one that my cousin sent me from Kuwait. Um, so it's, got <laughs> Arabic, it's got Arabic writing on it, but it's all the way upstairs. Anyway, so people are familiar with a soda can. So think about it like a, your body is like a soda can, right? And you want it to be like when the soda can first comes and it's full of soda from the factory and you fill it up with air and now you've got, and that's what supports your spine. And it actually makes the weight feel lighter. If you lose your air, not only does it change your positioning. So, so think about it like I'm braced, right? See how my body is like this. Okay. Well, as soon as I breathe out, what's going to happen? Clap. Right. Yeah. Now I try to pull it back in. I can't because I'm going to have to kind of do a shrug to get it back. Now I, I can never get that air back. So I just lost position. And now the weight's pushing me down and it's bone on bone. And it's a miserable time. So, Yes, I mean I know she was right when you said it, but that's kind of why it's right because that's you have why. to have you have to have air to help support you. Um, and then there's also the concept of coiling. You kind of coil yourself, make yourself a spring, but mm. that's way into the weeds. Okay, cool. Usually, kind of the way I wrap these up, and uh, what I want to do now is you you touched upon a couple of events, exciting stuff you have coming up in the near future. Why don't you talk a little bit about? take a few minutes to promote, uh, you know, all the great things you have coming up and uh, how people can follow them and follow you and just kind of promote everything you have going on. Okay, cool. Uh, so I appreciate that. So first thing we have is this month, this, as we're recording this, this is February. So, um, 
this is February 4th. So the next thing we have coming up as far as live streams is the USPA drug test at Winter Classic, and that's coming out February 27th. Um, that's going to start at 9 a.m. And if you just go to the Garage Room Life Media YouTube channel, there is the link to subscribe to it. Actually, when you go to our homepage on YouTube, you'll see across the thing, it'll say all of our upcoming live streams. And so you can just say, oh, this is, you know, whatever. And you just subscribe and make sure you click the bell for notifications and it will tell yeah. you, YouTube will send you a notification when we start our streams. So you've got the USPA drug test at Winter Classic. That's February 27th. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about a lot of great stuff tonight. This has been an awesome conversation, John. I'm so happy you were able to come on. Anything else you wanted to uh mentioned before we wrap it up just uh we're also um revamping our, our blog we're starting to pump out content there so every wednesday you're going to get not only um an article that's going to help you with your training but also you're going to get stuff uh we're trying to put out things just letting people know what the you know what's in stock because i know people are still trying to get equipment so what's right. in stock that we know about that's out there um we get also like what some cool product that's kind of caught our eye like oh yeah look at this thing this is kind of cool so like um stuff like that um uh so that's every wednesday you want to check out garage and we're going to create a, a way for you to subscribe free subscribe for free and you'll get a notification you'll get like a little newsletter and it'll say hey like this is what is coming you know what we have uh for you on the blog but all in all just you know subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel. The reason for that, honestly, is it just helps us live stream more. And the reason why, in a nutshell, is because when I approach an advertiser to help cover the co to like help me cover the cost of paying my people to go do a live stream, um, the first thing they look at is how many subscribers I have on YouTube because they want to know if they should take me seriously or if I'm just some dude, you know, with a cell phone trying to live stream stuff with my phone. And the more subscribers I have, the more legitimacy it gives me in the eyes of an advertiser, right? Um, Absolutely. And so that just helps a lot. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think that the content that we have on there, as I said, it's like ESPN for home gyms. And I think that if you go in our, our channel, I think it really is worth your while because we're tailoring content to you in a way that's never been done for home gym owners before. All right. That's uh that's a great message, one that I'm happy to keep spreading uh, on your behalf. And uh, again, it was awesome to have you on. Maybe uh, after some of these events, we catch up again sometime and uh, definitely hit me up for that collab on Central Georgia. Yes, indeed. We definitely will do it. We'll, uh, I'll give you a shout uh, in a couple of weeks. And actually, I'll give, yeah, I'll give you a shout in a couple of weeks and we can hash out something. All right. Well, thanks again, man. Uh, have a great evening and we'll talk again soon. Ciao, homie. Ciao, homie. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like this video and haven't done so yet please consider subscribing using that button right there and also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there this one is the one that youtube thinks that you will like the best and this one is the one that i think you will like the best as always share this with everyone and until next time ciao homie